For Wednesday, right? Yeah. I'm Dave, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So this video is about how to use these aux outputs right here on the mini Pixhawk. Or if you have a regular Pixhawk, it also has aux outputs. This is how to enable these aux outputs so you can use them for various accessories. And this is with the Tyrannus radio here. And I believe this is an X9D. And we're using the FreeSky 8... XR. That's a FreeSky 8XR receiver and it's underneath here and I'll get to that in a minute. So using those three items I'm going to show how to use the aux outputs. And I have a little diagram here and the aux outputs are represented right here by these pins on the diagram. So here is the X8R receiver, the FreeSky X8R receiver right underneath here. It's underneath on a tray on the quad right down below. And that's hooked by PPM mode to the Mini Pixhawk light. And that's represented right here on the schematic. Here's the receiver and there is the servo cable that hooks up the PPM and it's going into the RCN. Funny, the SBUS pin is actually SBUS out and is not used. So the way these pins are arranged, this is actually RC channel 9 here at the top and it goes down to RC channel 14 on the aux pins. At first I thought they were the other way around because these were labeled 1 through 6, so I thought 1 was 9 and 6 was 14, but it turned out they're actually the other way around with 14, I mean with 9 up here next to 6 and 14 down here next to 1. So here is the Tyrannus X9D radio and we're going to set that up first. And it's already on, I already turned it on. So the first thing we do is we simply press the menu button once and then press the page button once until we get into the uh, model setup right here. Of course this is assuming you already have a model set up. I'm not going to go into that depth. but. Uh, so we're in there right now. Let's go press the plus button. We're just going to the bottom and then paging up to the mode for the transmitter. And right now it's on D8 and we want to press enter and then go minus to bring it to D16 because we're going to use above 8 channels. So we'll put it on D16 all right, press enter again, come down here. I'm going to press minus, press enter, press minus. I want to get over to this one where it says 8. And what we're going to do is press enter and then raise that up to 16 channels. So we got all 16 channels. Press enter again and then exit back to the main menu with a long press exit. So that's how you get it set up for 16 channels. We have to go ahead and rebind for it to pick up on those 16 channels. So let's just go ahead back in menu, page button, and, uh, oh, excuse me, hold on. Menu once, page button once, use the plus key to go up from the bottom until you get to the bind mode right here. And just leave the highlight sitting on the bind. And what we're gonna do is press the enter button once we get the receiver in bind mode. And that requires holding down the button while plugging in the power. And when you let go of the button, the light should be on solid like that. Okay, now back to the radio. What I'm going to do with the radio is press enter now while this bind is highlighted. And the bind will start blinking you'll hear that sound and that means it's now bound. So once it's bound you can press enter again, stop the bind, and you can unplug the receiver and now it's bound. Okay so to test what we have to see if the aux outputs are really working we're going to use a servo and we're going to put that on RC9 or pin 6 which is out here in the outside. 
just make sure the servo white wire or orange wire, the signal wire, is at the top, ground at the bottom. So there's your servo. Now we need something to power this bus because the bus has no power. So I'm going to use this little 5 volt UBEC right here. So I'm going to take that and make sure the red wire is on the middle pin, anywhere on this bus right here. Let's make sure the red wire is on the middle pin, black wire on the bottom pin. And then I'm going to power that off the 12 volts from my battery. So I'm just plugging it in over here. So that looks good. So that's set up now for the test. So let's set up a switch on the radio to output on channel 9. So the first thing we do is, again, press the menu once. And now we're going to go to the servo section, which is number 6. Now I'm going to minus down to where we get to channel 9. I've got some other stuff in here, but we want channel 9, which is right there. And I'm going to go into channel 9 and edit it. Now in here, I've already got a name in there, Servo. And what we need to do is go down to the source, which is going to be the switch we're going to use. Now I'm just going to hit or click Enter right here and get that so it's blinking. And now I'm just going to move the switch I want. Now I think I'll use this switch right here. So when I move that switch, you should see it change. And there you go. So that's the SG switch. So now that we got that in, we can just hit enter again and exit, exit, and exit all the way back. And we're done. We've now got it. And now if you don't believe it, while you're in the main menu here, you can page over to where you get to the channel monitor. And then just flip the switch and you can see it changing over here. So we know that it's working. All right, we'll just leave that like it is. Now let's go and plug in the Pixhawk over here. And let's see, we'll plug in the Pixhawk over here. Like that. There's our servo. And uh, let me get back over here, see if I can get the servo and the radio in at the same time. All right. And you can see it's moving right there. So that's how you do it. But there is one other step. It may not work at first. So you have to go in the mission planner and do something as well. And I'll show you how to enable the pass-through for all those extra channels, 9 through 14, in the mission planner. So I've uh, plugged the USB cable into the Pixhawk right here. And I'm going to plug the other end into the notebook. And like I said, this could be a regular Pixhawk too. It doesn't have to be a mini Pixhawk. Okay, now let's bring up the mission planner. Okay, we're in the mission planner here, so let's go ahead and connect. And we're going to be using COM port 4 at 11.5200 for the speed. Go ahead and connect. All right. And once you're done connecting, let's go into configuration and tuning. We'll go into full parameter list right here. And what we're going to do is scroll down to the RC channels. And you'll see them right here. Why don't we just start out with, uh, see if we can find 14. Okay, here's 14 right here. Now what you want to do is go ahead and use RC pass-through. So if we want to use 14 for RC pass-through right here, just make that a 1, like that. And then go ahead that and do that for all of the channels, which is 9 through 14. So I'm going to start going backward. Here's 13 right here. And under the function right here, let's make that a 1. And then I'm just going to go through and do each one. Here's 12, and so forth, until I do them all, all the way to 9. Okay, just finishing up by changing channel 8, and now I'm doing 9. For some reason, they were at the bottom, and the others were at the top of the list. So I had to scroll down and find them, so I'm putting a 1 in there. And when you change them, these 
items will turn green. So there's eight and nine. And uh, there's, all right, let's do, we're doing nine through 14. Oh, excuse me. We're doing nine through 14. So I don't want to change eight. I should have left eight a zero. Just like that. Okay. So just nine, and then we go by six, seven, five, and you go on up until you find 14. There's where we were before. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and then nine was down at the bottom. So they're all done. Now let's just go and write the parameters right here. This is important. Write the parameters like that. Okay, now they're all passed through, and they should work just fine. So let's go ahead and disconnect. And we're done. So we know 9 is working right now. Let's say we wanted to put something on RC channel 10, and we could just go in there and edit that. And give it. You could give it some name, uh, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I'll just I'll just put something in there. Let's just put uh, B. All right. Now we want to make, assign that to some switch. Right now the source is Mac, so let's put it on another empty switch. Um, tell you what, I'll put it on this uh, this switch here, which is just a momentary switch, and I'll go ahead and press enter to get that blinking, and then press this switch, and we can see it's swi uh, switch SH, and then I'll just hit exit and get back out. And again, if we go to the mixer, this page over to the mixer, whoops, too far. There we go. Now I flip that switch, you can see over there on the right, you can see it moving. And we should be able to hook the servo back up and try it. So let's just move the servo from 9 here to 10, which is this one. And we'll go ahead and power up. Okay, now that the Pixhawk is initialized, we should be able to move this switch. I don't know if you can see that in frame or not. There, move this switch and it makes the servo move. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps if you want to use those aux outputs on the Pixhawk. Now, just as a side note, if you want to use say the gimbal setup then it will change RC9 or some of these other channels back from pass through to a different setting probably disable or maybe it'll come out as tilt so let's go over to the gimbal setup that's under initial setup right here there's initial setup go down the camera gimbal right in this area and when you say change the tilt channel RC9, say you use RC9, which is default, and once you change that, it'll change the RC9 away from pass through. So let's go back over there to configuration and tuning and go to full parameter list again. And we're already in it. And then we'll just scroll down to 9 and just see what the effect was. So it put it on 7 now instead of 1. And 7, if you look in the, is actually mount tilt. So you see it changed it. So if you want to use a gimbal, then you will not be able to use that channel if you're using it for tilt. So I just wanted to mention that. I'm not doing a gimbal setup here, but I just wanted to show how they were related, that the pass-through will not be able to be used if you're going to use that channel for a gimbal function. Here,